Christmas while we stand heart to heart and hand in hand. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on quite right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Hooves. Let's see, Whoville Directory, um, Lou Who? I hate you. Hate, 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 hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew that every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled, with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow I know all the Who girls and boys will wake bright and early, and they'll rush for their toys, and then, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's the thing I hate, the noise, noise, noise. Then the Who's, young and old, will sit down for a feast. And they'll feast, and they'll feast, and they'll feast, feast, feast. Oh, they'll feast on on who pudding and rare roast beast. Raw roast beast is a feast I can't stand in the least. And then they'll do something that I hate most of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, will stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. And they'll stand hand in hand, and, and then the Who's will start singing. The Who Doris, the Who Doris, welcome Christmas, come this way. The Who Doris, the Who Doris, welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. Welcome, welcome, the Who Ramus, welcome, welcome, the Who Damus. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long as we have hands to clasp. And they'll sing, and they'll sing, and they'll sing, sing, sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this whole Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? And then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. 
I'll make a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great, grincy trick. Why, with this coat, <laughs> and not at all, not at all, not at all, and a hat, yes, here we go, the French hat, yes, I'll look just like Saint Nick. Mr. Grinch, you really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus, you're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy old peel. Mr. Grinch, your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders. You've got garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? Ha! The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Oh, Max! And then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up poor old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes of the Hoos, who lay a snooze in their towns. All the windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the Hoos were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square. This is number one. The old Grinchy Claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue with the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinched, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present, pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, Checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. You're a foul one. Mr. Grinch, you have termites in your smile. 
you have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I pick the seasick crocodile. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the who's feast. He took the who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took the last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I'll stuff up the tree. And then the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast, and he saw a small who. Little Cindy Lou Who, who was no more than two. The Grinch had been caught by the tiniest who daughter, who had gotten out of bed to get a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick that he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, oh, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side, so I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head, he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when little Cindy Lou Who went up, with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On the walls, he left nothing but some hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to all the other who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for even who mouses. It was a quarter of dawn. All the who's still abed. All the who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 10,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the hooves. He was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that Christmas is not coming. They're just waking up, and I know just what they'll do. The mouths will hang open a minute or two, and then the whores down in Whoville will all cry, Boo-hoo! That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, and then it started to grow. Come this way, Fahu Forest.
Christmas, the Hoodorus. Welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. Welcome, welcome, Wahoo Ramus. Welcome, welcome, Tahu Damus. Christmas Day is in our grasp. So long as we have hands to clasp. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so. But it was merry. Very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eye. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And then he puzzled and puzzed till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And then what happened? Well, in Whoville, they say, at the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And then the true meaning of Christmas came through. And the Grinch, the very Grinch, found the strength of ten Grinches plus two. And now that his heart didn't quite feel so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys. He brought everything back. All the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Welcome Christmas. Bring your cheer. Cheer to all who's far and near. Christmas Day is in our grasp. So long as we have hands to clasp, Christmas Day will always be just as long as we have we. Welcome Christmas while we stand, heart to heart and hand in hand. Merry Christmas. <laughs>